The technology used in Audi vehicles is constantly developing and the legislative authority is calling for increasingly tighter emission standards. Engines are also evolving on a major scale. This evolution is essential, particularly in light of the requirement to continually reduce the level of pollutant emissions. From September 2014, all new vehicle types must comply with the limits of the Euro 6B emission standard or the OBD standard EU 6.1. The suffix W may also apply. Let's take a look at which limits we are referring to here. For diesel vehicles, the limit will soon be 500 mg per kilometre for carbon monoxide, for example and 170 mg per kilometre for the combined total of hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides. Furthermore, the limits for particulate matter emissions have reduced from 5 mg per kilometre to 4.5 mg per kilometre. As is clear from the specific breakdown for diesel engines, different names apply to the various limits that must be complied with by different deadlines. For example, W or even EU6B may be added. The Selective Catalytic Reduction SCR systems for exhaust gas aftertreatment, as well as the AdBlue tank systems, differ depending on the vehicle model. Here, for example, you can see that in the case of the A8 model year 2014, with the two engine models V6 and V8, a second-generation energy SCR system has been fitted. This model has an active tank and a passive tank for the Add Blue supply. In order to meet the new Euro 6 emission standard, cutting-edge technology is required. In our program on the transverse installed 1.6 and 2-litre four-cylinder TDI engine, the EA288, we have already demonstrated the technical changes that have been made in order to achieve the new emission limits. Now, we'll show you how the limits can be complied with for the 3-litre V6 TDI engine. By taking various measures to optimize friction, it has been possible to reduce pollutant emissions. For example, the drive power of the coolant pump has been reduced. The exhaust system has also been optimized. Here, we use a heating disc in the oxidizing catalytic converter, an SCR-coated diesel particulate filter with a water-cooled metering valve and a slip catalytic converter. Let's take a look at the components in detail. The heating disc in the oxidizing catalytic converter has a power draw of 500 watts and is only installed on front-wheel drive vehicles. This component ensures the oxidizing catalytic converter reaches its starting temperatures more quickly. This temperature is around 250 degrees centigrade. The SCR coated diesel particulate filter also helps to reduce pollutants in combination with the reductant. The coating eliminates nitrogen oxide emissions with the injection of the reductant. The particulate filter is fitted in very close proximity to the engine. For this reason, a water-cooled metering valve is used on the particulate filter. Please note that the functional principle of the DENOX catalytic converter system is outlined in SSP428. As a replacement for the DENOX catalytic converter, a slip catalytic converter is fitted in the underbody area. The coating on this catalytic converter is a combination of the coatings on the SCR and oxidizing catalytic converters. This coating enables the catalytic converter to oxidize the remaining CO into CO2 and to eliminate the small amount of NH3 substances that occur through the regeneration process. To ensure compliance with the Euro 6 emissions limits, a range of new sensors have been introduced, such as an additional temperature sensor that is fitted before the oxidizing catalytic converter. The purpose of this sensor is to measure the inlet temperature and to control the heating disc accordingly. A temperature sensor fitted downstream of the slip catalytic converter is used in the regeneration process or during normal operation to collect and measure the particles or nitrogen oxides that have passed through the catalytic converter and to establish the amount of reductant injected. In the Audi A8, the AdBlue reductant is carried in both a passive tank and an active tank. 
A filler neck is located on top of the passive tank. The passive tank is equipped with special conveying technology. Here you can see the transfer pump that pumps the reductant into the active tank. This second generation active tank, seen here in its disassembled state, is used in the A6. The control unit for the SCR system is installed directly on the tank. The swirl pot in the active tank is easy to remove. To do so, disconnect the connector and remove the retaining ring. These rubber strips help to heat the tank. The red strips contain heating bands. An improved fill level sensor is now equipped with seven reed contacts instead of three. This helps the sensor to transmit the AdBlue fluid with even greater accuracy. Inside are the brushless metering pump, the temperature sender and the pressure sensor for the reductant. Now that we have taken a look at the images of the active and passive tanks, I would now like to show you how to empty the passive tank as it is housed in the luggage compartment. To now empty the passive tank, we need this special tool, the VAS-6557. Compressed air is connected here, and the flow of compressed air generates a venturi effect in the tank. This effect produces a vacuum in the tank, enabling us to extract the liquid. To do that, I release the cap and insert the hose, pushing it in until it reaches the bottom. The movement of the valve then allows the hose to extract the 12 litre volume. Once extracted, we can then remove the tank without any problems. Naturally, once the tank has been refitted, it must be filled. To do this, you need the filling device, which you can use either outside of the vehicle, on the tank filler neck, or here, in the luggage compartment. The customer should not fill the tank in the luggage compartment. The workshop is responsible for performing this task. To do so, the workshop uses a special size 18 key as a socket to screw the cap into place. To fill the tank, we used our large bottle, which is clearly labelled with Add Blue, as well as the standards. This is the only way we can ensure that the system will function cleanly without any impurities. The bottle is simply attached and screwed on. The reductant flows into the tank once pressure is applied to the bottom of the bottle. The passive tank vents into the bottle. The filling procedure on the blue filler neck next to the tank cap is exactly the same. Your customers can refill add blue here if necessary. The topic of EU6 diesel engines with SCR systems will no doubt remain a key focal point in the future. A self-study program, SSP number 622, will be made available on this topic. The program is set to be published in the third quarter of 2013. We are always looking for ways to improve our programs. Please send any suggestions, improvements and suggested topics you may have to audi.service.tv at audi.de.